Good evening and welcome to the service of Compline or night prayer. My name is Karen. I'm one of the priests at St. Paul's Bloor Street and this is Loki and we are delighted to be joining you for this quiet contemplative service this evening. If you'd like to follow along with the order of service you can find it in our video description to download or you can simply follow along with me silently and pray in your heart and that is just fine. Um, just a heads up that next week there will be no Compline because it will be Ash Wednesday next Wednesday. And so we'll be doing an Ash Wednesday service at the church and you can uh, tune into that on our YouTube channel or come to it and register online for that. Um, and then we will continue with Compline. We're going to be offering more Compline services through Lent. So I will continue to do it on Wednesdays um, on our YouTube channel at seven o'clock like usual. But on Mondays and Fridays, it will also be offered through Instagram Live by some parishioners. So keep an eye out for that. And it would be great if you joined us for as many of those as you feel able. So that will start next Friday, next week, um, which is the first Friday in Lent. And now I invite you to take a moment to collect yourself. Remember that you're coming into the presence of our loving God. Light a candle if you have one nearby. And let's begin. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. We hear your voice, O Lord Jesus, saying, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. We come into your presence, weary and burdened with our sins, and with the cares and distractions of the world. Let us rest a while in your sacred presence. Let our hearts find rest here. Let nothing separate us from you here in this world or in the world to come. Amen. And now I invite you in this time of silence to think through the past day or the past week, if you prefer, with everything that it's held, both the good and the bad. And let's lift all of that up into the care of our loving God. And now continuing uh, together. O merciful Jesus, ever present and with a heart ready to receive all who come to you, weary and heavy laden, give us a spirit of sincere repentance, a strong hope in your mercy, and a lasting desire to grow in virtue and to walk in your way. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. This evening we will use the same Compline hymn that we used last week, which is the O Christ, uh, based on the words by F.C. Happold. And together we say, O Christ, serene and tranquil light, shine into the depth of my being. Come and draw me to yourself. Free me from the chatter of my mind, and draw me through and beyond all words and symbols into the silence, that I may discover you, the unspoken word, the pure light, piercing and transforming the darkness that veils the ground of my being. For our psalm this evening, we will use Psalm 16. Psalm 16. Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. I say of the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. Those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out libations of blood to such gods or take up their names upon my lips. You, Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. 
The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You make, me, you make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. For our scripture reading this evening, we are continuing to work through the E100 uh, readings, which are 100 of the essential passages of scripture, and we're preaching through them on Sundays and then reading them together through the week. And so this week, um, it deals with King David, the rise of Israel, um, and so Saul and King David and the David's idea to build a temple for God which is what Jenny preached on on Sunday. And so go check that out. But I thought that we would take one of the passages um, from those readings this week that looked at David being anointed in the first place, God choosing David to be the next king after Saul really didn't work out. So the reading is 1 Samuel 16, verses 1 to 13. And this is picking up with the prophet Samuel, who is the one who anointed Saul as king in the first place, and now, um, now needs to figure out what to do. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jess Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take a, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The leaders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab, who was the oldest of Jesse's sons, and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, there remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I find this passage fascinating on a lot of levels. Um, first, there's that, the very first line, the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? And that is, it's a really sad story. If you are reading through the E100 readings, you come across it that Israel wanted a king desperately. They wanted to be just like all their neighbors. And even though God was supposed to be their ruler, supposed to be their king, they were like, no, 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 we want we want a proper king. And so God was like, okay, well, this is this is kind of what you get. So 
So Saul became the first king and he looked great. Uh, he was very tall and handsome and so on, but he didn't obey God. Um, and he wasn't really interested in putting God first. And so, um, so God rejected him as king and said, no, we're going to set somebody in, in your place who is going to put me first. And this ended up leading to a whole civil war because Saul didn't accept that uh, word from God. And so he fought against David for a very long time, which is comes later in the story than this morning for this evening's reading. Um, so, but Samuel had a hard time, um, had a hard time with that because he had nurtured Saul and he had anointed him as king and it really didn't work out, even though Samuel had been the one to tell the people, this is not a good idea. And God had to say to Samuel, you know what, you have to set aside that plan um, because I have a new plan now and it's going to be a good one, but you have to set aside the old and embrace the new. And that is a very hard thing for us to do at times. So I have been convicted by this particular verse before saying God, where it felt like God said to me, Karen, how long are you going to grieve over those plans that were not my plans and accept what I have for you? So that is all I will leave you with this evening. And now moving into the responsories. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. And now the gospel canticle, the song of Simeon, beginning and ending with a refrain. Preserve us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Preserve us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. For our time of prayer this evening, we will do as we usually do and begin with a time of intercession, raising our requests to God, and then move to a time of thanksgiving. And so I invite you to come before God in your vulnerability as we lift up all the concerns on our hearts. And we think first of the world with all of its concerns. We think of the impacts of climate change, especially on agriculture, famines, changing environments that are changing livelihoods. Pray for those places around the world experiencing natural disasters. For peace in war-torn countries. Thinking of Afghanistan. The conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Any other countries or places that come to mind for you right now? We think of the worldwide church, our brothers and sisters around the world, especially remembering those undergoing persecution for their faith. We 
And then we think of our concerns closer to home across Canada, in our churches, around the country, around our city, for wisdom for our elected leaders, government officials, for a spirit of understanding between people who have different views on how to handle COVID. For those who are experiencing homelessness, food insecurity, and any other issues that may be known to you about your city, your province, your town. And we lift up to God our family and our friends, those situations closer to home, for people who have asked us for prayer. those who have gone through relationship breakups or difficulties, those who are dealing with injury or sickness, and all other concerns that you may have. And finally, we come before God on behalf of ourselves and those needs and concerns that, that are known to us alone, maybe. And we offer them to God as a gift, as a sacrifice, as a sign of trust in him. inviting him to offer us his peace in return. And then we move into a time of thanksgiving and we bless God for the gifts that he has given us, the things that may have made us smile over the past week or brought us delight for the basics that he has given us, food, clothing, shelter, people who know our names and bring us joy. And anything else that comes to your mind that you are grateful for this evening. And finally, we give thanks for the gift of Jesus and for the great gift that God made himself known to us and allows us to be in relationship with him. And then we turn our prayers together, we collect them and offer them up to God in the words of the collect. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this life may rest in your eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now continuing in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Christ. For the night is at hand, and the day is now past. 
As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. And now a blessing before we go. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you tonight and always. Amen. Thank you for joining me. Uh, remember to join us for Ash Wednesday next Wednesday instead of Compline, and I will look forward to seeing you soon. Take care.